Wow, wow. So cool. And I think most of us understand that the fruit, this, the, the testimony is the fruit of a God encounter, a God experience in a tangible, demonstrable way. And this is what that is. And this is a big piece of fruit. I mean, it's huge. And what is in every fruit? What, ah, ooh, you are smart. Seed for more. It's seed for everybody. You need to drink. This is for everybody. It really is. And I believe you're going to see these kinds of things in your own life. I mean, really, this is only meant to be sort of a reflection what God releases through everybody, the ecclesia, your life, the big things, the getting out of the boat and walking on the water sort of stuff. That's the season we're in. This is a crazy miracle because, I mean, literally, we had no money. And, it, you know, I mean, we, and wasn't that we didn't try. I mean, we, put a, we did put a strategy together. I put a really cool looking video together. Remember my video? I thought I, I, I sold it pretty well, sharing the vision. I sent it to all my American buddies, you know. You know, you know I try to pick some wallets and some pockets. And, and everybody was so encouraging. Man, this is amazing. But no money was coming in, you know. <laughs> You know, so I bet I, bet, I couldn't count the bales. There were no bales to count. I mean it. I mean, you can't even make this hyperbole. You know, sometimes it is so big, so enormous. Hyperbole, you can't hyperbolize it. Is that such a word? I have no idea, but you can't do it. It's just too big. It's just too good. And I just love it. And only God gets the credit and the glory for it. And uh, so anyway, please... Just take a drink. Take that and say, yes, Lord, in the fruit of this, you know, I just take that seed. I just say yes to the big, just miracle you're going to do in my life physically or my family or our marriage or the workplace or even the nation and the government. But take, take it. It's right there. It's, you know, the, his presence, his heartbeat is, he's, no, he's only a respecter of faith. Not of just one person. So take hold of that for your family, for your health, for your marriage. And, and the testimony. And that's, why, that's really one of the reasons why the battle is so heavy. You've probably noticed. It's because the enemy is just, he's, he's whining. He's not winning, remember? I mean, because there is so much breakthrough. There is so much victory. I mean, he's pounded on the church, and the church is still standing. He's thrown you in the fiery furnace, and there's no smell of smoke. No, really, he's put you in the lion's den, and you're just chilled. You know, I mean, and, it's, and there's a faith that comes out of your life that's purely Jesus. That's what happens. You didn't survive the lion's den because, you know, you got big biceps. You know, or because you got a bigger roar. You didn't survive the fiery furnace because you're so mature and so amazing. No, it's because Jesus. You don't stop leaning into who he is and you, just, you see it in a whole new way. And so that is just so cool. And you can feel it. It's not about a building. It really isn't. This is just a, a representation, a reminder, a connection of faith for how big our God is. Amen? And it's for everywhere. we got to know that. If it stops here, man, whoo, my, where are you, Lord? No, it doesn't. It, it, it's with every one of us out there in our worlds, with our families, our challenges, and, and whatnot. So anyway, the purchase of this property is a massive financial miracle. It's definitely the big, I've seen a lot. I've been, I've been doing this for 44 years in ministry. And this is definitely, I think, the biggest financial miracle um, that I've ever been a part of. And uh, it's pretty dang cool. It really is. And, um, and just, let me just say this. The primary vehicle that God used, because God has vehicles. I mean, you know, he's got Ferraris, you know, he's got Mercs and BMWs. No, vehicles. He's got vehicles. 
He has a lot of vehicles, means, mechanisms by which he does stuff. And the primary vehicle that he used were people. Relationships. Yeah. You know, you didn't go out back and, boy, all that money was just growing on a tree. You know what I'm saying? God uses relationships. uses people. It's amazing. It's, 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 it's transcendent in the sense that there's nothing they could do, but yet he did through them, through those relationships, through that connection of faith, through that heart for one another. That happens. And so with that in mind, here is chapter 2. Okay, We just did chapter 1. Good chapter. And there is a whole lot of juice in that for everybody. But here's another one. Another big upgrade. You know, that is with everybody in mind. And here's a, let me start with a very simple question. What is God's favorite? We know he loves relationships. There's a lot of different kinds of relationships. A lot of different kinds of connection. But what is God's favorite relational vehicle for our advancement? Our health and well-being. What relationship holds the lion's share of our productivity, our advancement? What is it? Family. Absolutely. Natural and spiritual. There is nothing that produces more blessing, activates more treasure than family. Natural and spiritual. We are a family. Did you know that? Yeah, I'm your brother. Sorry. You know? Or your father. Get over it. First Timothy 5. Treat older men as fathers. Older women as mothers. Younger women as sisters. Younger men as brothers. Go look up those words. You know what it means? Father, mother, sister, brother. Not symbolically. You're not an uncle. You're a dad. You're not an aunt. You're a mother. Family. That's exactly what he... That's, that's what he created. Why there is, because there is a, there, there's no other relationship. There's many, but there's no other that has the depth and the breadth and the length that God has designed to manifest from family. How deep it goes, how much it possesses, and how long it, 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 it continues. Uh, is greater than anything else. There's nothing government can do. There's no, no connection you can ever have that has more grace, more resource, more power. Why? It's the heavenly family, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit operating through his earthly family, his spiritual family. Yeah. That's why the enemy attacks it relentlessly. He attacks marriage. He attacks parenting. He trying to redefine it, dismiss it, sideline it. Same thing with spiritual family. Spiritual family is infinitely greater. It really is. It's not about being better, but it's about God. The first biological family is the beginning. It's the foundations. It's the setup. It, it gets the heart and the mind in, in a values context. And drawing from that and then suddenly discovering the family of God. Discovering that you can have that kind of connection, that kind of love, that kind of support for people that didn't grow up under one roof. But yet, because of Jesus, because of that one blood, we, we share the same blood, the same spirit, the family. Very specifically, no relationship no relationship taps the well of our growth like multi-generational partnering and exchange. That's what it is. One thing you notice about a family, there's different ages. There's different levels of experience. We see that very clearly. Here is a definition. A definition of generational exchange which is what family does, natural and spiritual. It's where the parent generation will take who they are, what they know, and what they have, 
And they will invest it into sons and daughters who will improve it, right? They will improve upon that investment by adding to it who they are, what they know, and what they have. And better things usually happen. Do you know that? All improvement, all development, all gain is multi-generational. How do you think they went from the iPhone 1 to iPhone 15? Different generations of techies, of engineers. I've taken it one direction, hand it off, and they find out something else. They improve upon it. They add to it. That's how this all works. All progress is because of this multi-generational dynamic that God has given to us. If we are going to mine for gold, or drill for oil, or farm for crops, we need the right tools and the right processes in order to do that. Well, multi-generational relationships is God's best tool and best process. And I know some of you have had terrible familial experiences. It doesn't matter. God has not changed his plan. In family, natural and spiritual are treasures that only manifest when we serve and walk together in that way. Every almost, almost, do it, just, oh, where's my Bible? Can we get a Bible I can hold? <laughs> Never mind. Where, aren't you Christian? I know, it's all, I got it in here, but I wanted to hold one, you know. But it's all right. <laughs> I love paper. <laughs> but in the Bible, almost every, oh, you're going to, okay, again, here you go. Yeah, ooh, it's a nice old one. It's, man, it's old, older than me. You know, that's, that's a Bible. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I just want to hold it. Did you know that almost every, Epic event in scripture includes multi-generational recipe. It's in there. Maybe not everyone, but almost everyone. Think about it. God told a family to fill, subdue, and rule in the earth. Told a family, hey, pretty big expectation. The ark, Noah's ark. It was built to save humanity. It was family. We saw family. God's covenant to mankind is rooted in, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. Proverbs 13, 22 says, a righteous man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. So we're always thinking with three generations in mind. The Paul, the Barnabas, and the Timothy. Amen. And it's all over scripture. I mean, my favorite, the Christmas story, revolves around an old couple, a young couple, and two babies. That's the Christmas story. And of course, I always want to say my favorite. Everything's my favorite. That's the nature of the word. Everything, it's so powerful. When you get to it, it's your favorite. So this is my favorite too. And that's the, the Mount of Transfiguration. Think about that. They saw, except for the resurrection, it's the most powerful demonstration of heavenly glory. In his body, Jesus in his body manifested heavenly glory. But notice who came, Moses, Elijah, Jesus, then Peter, James, John. Three different generations. It was multi-generational. It's, it's all over scripture. I could stand here for an hour and teach on this. Remember when Elisha got a double portion? How did he get it? Begging Elijah, oh, please. No, Elijah said, if you see me when I go, it's yours. 
Now you might think, why would that be hard? Because there was a chariot of fire and horses of fire that manifested. And man, he could have taken his eye off of Elijah and just grabbed onto the sensational moment of the fiery chariot and the fiery angels. He didn't. He just kept his eye. That older generation, man, that's that, the, the honor, the respect, man. Thank you for what you gave me. You know, it's foundational to everything else, and he got it. Yeah. If you dishonor a previous generation, you will lose. You will lose. And yes, there's mistakes and bad stuff done, but yet the seeds of your future, blessing is in there as well. And there's just, like I said, there's so many um, examples of this. I mean, Nehemiah, remember when he restored Jerusalem, the, built the walls and, and the doors? It said that he, he organized them to work in families. So they worked and fought as families. And, there, and like I said, there's, there's many more examples of this. But healthy generational exchange is a massive blessing for us all. And that's why it experiences the greatest battles. It really does. And it will because it enjoys the greatest blessing, the greatest benefit. So anyway, similar to us getting blessed from the purchase of this property, uh, here's another upgrade for all of us. Before Steve and Jackie left us for Tampa. You may not remember that. Some of you were not here. We were going through a pretty tough time. Remember, I, I, remember the, the critter cancer kind of got on me? <laughs> you know, and so I was like, oh my goodness. And of course, Steve and Jackie, just part of our community, called and gifted, really stepped up and, and um, really led and serving the way they did and of course I'm asking the question is this my Timothy is this our Timothy I was asking that question I was looking it looks like my Timothy and what I mean by that is someone who could come in the next generation and start to lead and I thought that way until they left <laughs> and I said I guess not we're not getting them back. They're in Tampa, man. They're being wined and dined by American culture. That's why them being here is a miracle. This is a sign and a wonder. They loved it there. Their kids loved it there. When they came back for Christmas in December of 2022, and I was kind of wondering, is there a possibility? Maybe, just maybe, they're going to come back. And I invited them over to my house for coffee. Connie was gone before they flew out the next day. And they were talking so glowingly of Tampa. I mean, they were, and I was just bummed, man. I don't want to hear about Tampa. I want to hear about us. But anyway, bottom line is it ain't them. Then God brought them back. Woo! That was really. I mean, if God, it was a miracle to get them there. I know, I watched it. The battle, the difficulty, the challenge. And then it was a miracle. They, it was only God. God's the only one that could have convinced them it's better here. <laughs> you know? So they came back, yay. And so then I just said, God, thank you. Looks like this is our Timothy. And we had that conversation. I said, you know, I'm, I'm really wanting, and we're thinking like a few years, two, three years. And not because of anything other than we're just rebuilding, you don't have any money, you know, that kind of thing. And so that's what I was thinking, you know. And I said that to them when they came back, man, two, three years, want to put this into your hand to lead the team, and the team is leading journey. And then March came. Kevin and Teresa were here, very apostolic environment. And I hear God, my prophetic fires in the apostolic. It just does. And so whenever I get in an apostolic environment, environment where just people are getting activated and it's just the kingdom coming, I just suddenly, my deafness just goes. I hear, and I kept, every time I looked at them, I said, what are you, I heard, why are you waiting? It's time. And not only was I hearing this, every time I looked at them, I had this excitement about them doing more. 
you know, excitement about what's in their life and, you know, what would be released if they, I, I felt that. And I'm going, man, it just would not leave me. So I finally told Connie. I said, hey, babe, what do you think? I'm, you know, I just keep hearing. It's now. It's time. What are you doing? Come on. You know, and I got, and not only did I have this excitement about them stepping up into that, also, my heart was stirring as well. I need, God wants me to write. I got about five books I'm supposed to write. I could tell, but you got to have time to do it. You got to be able to focus on it. Some are, and also some of these other, because we are an apostolic community. We walk and serve and love on others outside of journey. Why? Because we're bringing the kingdom. We're not bringing the organization. That's our whole passion, our whole focus. And so I'm on Zoom doing um, just consulting and ministry with uh, eldership teams and leaders of other organizations. And I, I felt the stirring. I just felt a grace on it. So I knew God's doing something, and I share it with Connie, and she's got, yeah, I feel really good about it. And so the next step is to call my buddy, my two, Denver and Saki. I mean, those guys are pillars in this house. I mean, pillar pillars, you know, war horses. And so I went and I told them, I said, guys, I know we're thinking two, three years from now, but I just, I feel like it's going to be this year, something, you know, and they felt good about it. I mean, right away. And said, well, we should probably go and maybe check it out with Steve and Jackie. So a week later, I get him over the house and somehow, I don't know how, but somehow Steve had a sense that it was talking about when they're going to lead Journey, lead the team. And, um, but his mind said, Bill's probably going to want to wait five or six years, you know. <laughs> he was quite surprised when I said, hey, how about now? You know, how about this year? What do you feel? I mean, I know you, they've got their own ministry outside the local church, as a lot of people do, because we're not defined by just a local church, even though thank God for it, and we're a part of it. But the Daniel group and the Bible school and whatnot, so, but I mean, they came back a week later, humbled, honored, and said, yes, we feel good about it. And we took it to our core team, the relationships that we have, and the core team. I mean, I couldn't. Man, they were so happy to get rid of me. Everybody, green light from it. It was like, isn't there anybody that wants me? No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. Absolutely. I was so stoked. There wasn't a yellow light, let alone, you know what I'm saying? There wasn't a yellow light. Just, and then we took it to the core team. Uh, we, and we took it to translocal leaders we're connected to. I've got other relationships. They might not have government and journey, but yet our decisions, we make affect them. And therefore, I want to hear from them. And I mean, everyone, I, the Bethel leaders, it, you know, uh, Steve Backlin, uh, Kevin, um, Kevin Deadman, called them, uh, Chip and Doug. We've got, a, we got a, a leadership alliance called Be Mosaic. Man, eh, just thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're okay, we got it. So we're praying into it. I, my wife and I have literally done this half a dozen times with churches we've started and led. And we've helped others probably another two dozen churches or ministries do it. But this one's different. This is very, very different because it's not about us leaving. I just want you to know that we're not going anywhere. Sorry, we're staying put. It's familial. It's a, it's, see, most, a lot of succession planning is linear. Hand off and get out of here. No, no, no. This is familial. This is we're partnering together. And Connie and I get to step into another place. They step, all of us step into another place for new things to be released, new things to be created. So I just want to make that very, very clear. That it's, we know we're supposed to, we, I feel like because we've been talking so much about multi-generational and it's so big on God's heart and the fact that God's doing this now, why? Because it's so full of incredible resources. There's a resource there's a wisdom, there's an authority, there's a grace, there's a provision we're only going to get when we operate like this. When we can hand things off, we can step into new places, we're not stuck. Did you know there's a 50% fail rate when it comes to this kind of process? But guess what? We're on the good side of the 50. We got, so, I mean seriously, we got so much, it's like Wow! This, there's, not, there's nothing even scary in this. Why? Because of our relationships, because of our values. So you've got these two extremes. 
You've got the organization, the denominational model, and it's already predecided, and they say exactly what that succession looks like. And it's applied through that. Then you got the charismatic or the, the kind of the dark charismatic model, which is you got the one superstar, you know, they the big gift and all the pastors are kind of managers and helpers. And so, okay, I'm kind of done, you know, leading my church. Let me hand it off to someone else. It's their turn to lead their church and fire the elders, do whatever they want with the property. I'm just saying that is a typical care. And we're not, we are an apostolic family. We're an apostolic team. God gave us vision, us purpose, us values, us general strategy. It doesn't belong to me, it belongs to us. So Steve's coming in, Steve and Jack, you're coming in to lead a team. That's how our model is. I, Jesus is our ultimate leader, and then he graces me to lead a team. A team leads journey, the community, and the community gets out there and gets people saved, delivered, healed, brings the kingdom. That's our model. It's amazing. It is an amazing um, culture of honor. And so that's, so we have set a date. You're, you're hearing, I was only going to tell you in August. Because we're going to do it October 6th, the weekend of October 6th, mark the date. We're actually going to do a Be Mosaic conference, right? We're going to call it Fire and Light. Fire and Light. And we're going to use that Sunday, that, that conference. We're having some of my Be Mosaic buddies. You've never met them. Doug, tremendous prophet, chip, apostle, and I mean, knows the Bible inside out. Just great leaders that I've been walking with for many years in the States. So we're going to be here to celebrate that. Right now we're in the process of that through communication, you know, and slowly pouring it on them. <laughs> Boy, it's fun. Boy, it's fun handing off to someone that you trust, someone you respect, someone you know is going to take it and do better with it than we did. And so you get to hear that, but now I want you to hear from Steve and Jackie, their side. Please give it up for Steve and Jackie. Amen. <laughs> Jackie's going to share um, first in a moment, but it was interesting. I have my notes on my iPad. And I look down at my iPad and it goes into verifying updates. <laughs> and the whole thing shut down. And I'm like, oh no, it, it's back up. But I'm like, isn't that almost a prophetic sense? <laughs> verifying an update. I mean, when does that ever happen? Like in the middle of it, okay. it's like you talk about the iPhone, it's like updating. And there's an upgrade and an update that God is doing. But I think, I think for us, we want to share a little bit of, of, of the journey, um, our history with the Bennetts. Uh, and then also just what, what it is we feeling that God is saying for us in this upgrade that we're all going through. So Jack's going to share a little bit on the history. Hi. <laughs> oh, the Lord must help me now because this is a moment. <laughs> um, so we have a picture. There is Pastor Ball on the left. And there's um, Jacques and Jenny Oberholzer and Stephen and I. And Pastor Gillian. So in 20, I believe it's 2010, we were actually ordained by Bill um, as pastors. <laughs> and that's where our journey started. He came to minister at our supernatural school that we ran up there. And, um, go oh, go to number two and three. Oh, there he's praying for us. And there we are down. <laughs> Good progression. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we've known them for a while, and um, we had served, so we've been in ministry for about 23 years, and um, we'd served um, a church, and we were always like, Jesus, Holy Spirit come, revival come, and we were the ones sort of saying, come on, let your glory come, and eventually the Lord said, you know what? you can actually be released and you can go to a church like Journey where the community is doing that. The community is being led by his presence. And I must just say personally, I was very, 
very struck by the fact that the lead pastor would go and pray in the mornings at five o'clock, just with him and his guitar, and I just heard the story, and um, that was the beginning of my love for this couple, that these lead pastors made Jesus number one, when no one was looking and no one, yeah, they didn't need to, but they did. Real authentic love for Jesus, and that is what drew me into this community and to this couple. Um, anyway, so we came to Journey, and we loved Journey. Um, but then in 2020, the Lord started speaking to us about America, a season. <laughs> okay, we only realized it was a season recently. <laughs> we thought it was just go. So, you know, we like all in, sold everything, went. You guys know the story. We go off to the States, and um, we, we sat in a very different culture there. Um, But it was good, because we sat in this prayer room culture, which we'd never experienced. And the Lord did a lot um, there. Um, But yeah, when we came back in December, I really felt, man, I feel like we're going to come back. Now, Steve is thinking five years, citizenship, he's so excited about doing the Declaration of Independence, telling me. (laughs) And... uh, (laughs) we, <laughs> I'm like, mm, I think we're going to come back. So I'm like, Lord, I need a sign that we're going to come back. And I need a job offer. I need someone to like, be like, we want you back. So two days before we left, the day before we left, we get a call from Bill, and Bill asked Stephen, Stephen, what's your five-year vision? And Steve's like, no, I'm in America. I'm getting my, you know, green card, da 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 So I got hold of Bill afterward, and I said, Bill, why did you ask Stephen that? (laughs) So then he's like, oh, Jackie, you know me. And then he just said, you know, we're thinking about journey, and we're thinking about you guys. And I just knew then. I sat in Bloberg with my mom next to me, and I had listened to the voice note he sent. And it was like, this is God. This is God. (laughs) We're coming back, and this is the Lord. Anyway, we went back, and we thought, but two to three years' time, so that's fine this time. We went back. But as we went back and we had to renew our visa, people there prophetically would just say, you're going back, you're going back, you're going back. There's something waiting for you, you're going back. And eventually we got the message. It was very hard, tough, but we came back. And, um, yeah, we... Coming to the march in this year, we came back, we served, we did what I normally did do, get back involved in the community. And um, just before Bill called us in March, we went on a retreat. And I woke up the one morning and I saw this crown, the Lord um, took a crown from Bill's head and then he put it on Stephen's head. And I woke up and he said, the time is now. And I hadn't told Steve, um, but then when Bill said, we think it's now, I just knew and I said, yes, the Lord has spoken. The time is now. So, y'all, I'm going to hand over to Steve. I think, I think that, that that's really our journey. It, it was interesting when I was looking at the photo of the ordination and everything. Um, it, I was reminded that actually we got into, I mean, we've always been passionate about revival. We've always been about his presence. But Bill actually was the one who introduced the revival culture into ministry for, for us as a church. Um, in 2008, he invited two pastors to go with him to Bethel Healing School. Uh, Nigel was one of them. You guys know Nigel. Uh, and some of you probably, most of you probably don't know who the other pastor was, but it's Jacques Oberholzer, who was our senior pastor. And uh, they went across to the, the healing rooms and Bethel got absolutely whacked, um, came back and Jacques Oberholzer said, we're changing the way we do church. And, and we really got introduced into that revival culture, fire tunnels, treasure hunting, getting out on the streets, seeing God do amazing things. Um, and, and it was, was for me the, the journey that we saw of, of God intertwining what I honestly believe is a culmination of connecting us with the Bennets, of them coming and prophesying. I've had it prophesied over me um, by a guy who didn't know that we sort of knew each other, but a prophet in every nation who said, I see, Stephen, that you have a gift of faith, the likes of Bill Bennett. Those are his words. Um, and uh, and we, we saw God doing a lot of this. And we really honor Bill and Connie just for what they have done 
here. They're not leaving. This isn't their farewell. As I said, this is their thing. And the thing that I love about succession in this environment, succession in a business world in an organization is I hand over an organization and therefore I'm done and I leave. Succession in a family is about relationship. And so I love the fact that we have an opportunity to build something that's different to the world. That we can walk in honor to the people who have given so much to see the foundations of this church being built and we can still walk with them in the next season and to be able to go. Because we, we all know that thing about, you know, building a way that someone, you know, standing on your shoulders. Well, you know, it's easier to stand on someone's shoulders if they're still there. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and, so, and so we really want to just honor the, the two of you just really with what you've done. Um, we want to say this is an amazing church, uh, how you've walked with us over the years, how you've walked with people here, um, and we count it a great honor to be able to, to really walk this out. Um, but I really wanted to share this, that, guys, this is Christ's church. We are all stewards. We are all stewards of it. Um, and, and in, a couple of weeks ago, I want to share this testimony, and I want to share what I feel like God's saying. God says to me, Stephen, this is your church. What do you want it to be? What do you want it to be? And he was just asking me a question. And I started writing some stuff down, but I want to flip that question around because it's all about church. We carry this church. What do you want it to be? It's not about me standing up here and giving, you know, this is the vision, all of that. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. What do you want to see happen here and uh, I started to write down, and there were seven things that I wrote down, and they actually are here. I, this was just in the prayer meeting. This is why you got to come to prayer meeting. And I wrote these down. I said, God, I want people to hunger for you. I want people to seek you. I want Wednesday night, our prayer time, full of people praising you and praying. I want to see people excited and dreaming with God for this community. And I want community and a sense of belonging to be normal. And I want the supernatural to be normal. And I, wrote, and I wrote down these seven things. And Amanda stood up. It was her time to pray. And she did something that we don't normally do in our prayer time. She said, I feel like I need to make some declarations. And she started making declarations. And I'm not kidding on you. She said six out of the seven. She stood up there and she started declaring that we are going to be supernatural, it's going to be normal, that this community is going to be a community of people coming together. And I'm sitting there and I've literally got it in my, in my, my written pad, just tick, 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 the only one, Amanda, that you missed, because <laughs> I'm sure you all want to know well, which one didn't she get. <laughs> she missed the one I want Wednesday night to be full of people, but it was, <laughs> it was at the Wednesday night, so it makes sense, all right? <laughs> And for me, it's just showing you the heart of God, that God was just saying, Stephen, this is what we're praying into. And guys, I really feel like as we're stepping in, there's something deep that God's doing. And I feel like there are three things that for me is an upgrade for all of us that I want to touch on. Number one, I really believe he's taking us to a deeper level of intimacy with him and revival. The, this picture is Rhodes Memorial. How many know Rhodes Memorial? I was standing there the one time praying over the city of Cape Town. I'd flown down from Peter Maritzburg and I was standing praying over Cape Town and I saw the shadow. Now you can't really see it, but there's a shadow of Table Mountain over the city. And God said to me, he said, Stephen, the shadow is determined by the position of the sun. The shadow, the place of influence is determined by the position of the sun. What is the position of the sun in your life? Will determine your influence. We need to go deeper in his presence and of revival. Then the second thing I really believe God is doing is God is establishing us as a community church. Now, we are the church, amen? Don't think of the building, we are the church. And I believe that this speaks about two things, that we are a church believers in a community. We have been placed here in a community. There's something about this area. You know that before, about a year before God called us to the US, God spoke to us about Boston and this area that Jackie and I started talking about selling our house and moving into this area and we didn't understand and then God said, I'm sending you to the US and I said to us, I said, it makes no sense. Why do we have this burden for this area and then God, you're sending us to the US. And then while we're in the US, you guys get this venue in the area we had a burden for and God sends us back. 
you just see God's fingerprints all over these things. He's placed us in a community. And then number two under that is we are a community within as believers. We're building community together. We want to do life together. Guys, I want to grow old with you. <laughs> Man, today, today is getting a little bit creepy with like, love you, you know, but it, you know, <clears throat> I want to do life. I want to do life together. Yeah. God, I see that hand, brother. We're exciting, guys. We're starting a Friday youth soon. Not because we want to be like every other church, but because our youth also need community. Amen? So we want to see that happen. We want camps. We want to, we want to have time where we're connecting together. And then the last thing is that I really believe that God is calling us into a greater level of the apostolic. And this is what Bill was sharing about. I believe that him stepping into an apostolic is actually raising the umbrella over us as a community in the apostolic. I, w- I was chatting with Carol Campbell. Um, I don't think she's here. Um, about uh, She's going on mission next year, I think, to Uganda. And I'm like, Carol, we've got to send people with you. Like, I feel like there's, there's something that we're stepping into that God's saying, guys, it's time for us to look out. Lift up your eyes to the harvest. And I really believe we want to start doing outreaches on Saturday morning. There there is so much that I believe he's doing. But the apostolic is being raised where he's saying, this is the community. It was either Paul Manwaring or Danny Silk. This was like 13 years ago, made this comment. And because I couldn't find it, I think I'm going to have to claim it as mine. Um, Revival launches revolution and revolution initiates reformation. This is who we are, revival and reformation. And so I really want to ask that you pray for us in this journey. We need to cover this whole process in prayer. I want to ask you, and this is my challenge to us, like I started with, this is your church. What is your upgrade? Will you spend time with Jesus asking that question? God, what is the upgrade that you have for me? What is my role in this next journey? And then will you please pray for us in this whole process? As we said, we're looking at, what, it's three months away until the actual date, um, but there's going to be a process behind the scenes that we're walking with leaders. And uh, what we actually want to do now is actually ask that you pray for us. We're going to ask some of the the SMT and the leaders, but if you would like to, we want to have a family moment where if you would like to also come and pray uh, for us. Um, So we just want to finish off today by really just committing it to the Lord in prayer. Yeah, wonderful. Man, that was so good. Wasn't that good? Man, that was a great picture. That old old revival picture. That's cool, man. More Jesus. More of that. Yeah, this is so good. Just please remember, just mark it on your calendar. It's going to be a big deal. October 6th. We are going to actually make a conference of it called Fire and Light. We'll have some friends coming from other places, but you know, this is going to real, be our kind of family uh, apostolic moment. So just mark that week, and that's when it's going to be. And please remember, no, we're not going back anywhere. You know, we are here. This isn't like, a, are you going to sneak out on us? <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. I'd be stupid. My goodness, I am so looking forward to just all the upgrades, all the things we're going to be doing together as we go forward. So we're still going to be part here, still be on the leadership, still be ministering here, but also doing other things that God has us do and, 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 and whatever that means also for Journey of Grace. So can I just invite our SMT, whoever, any of the le- guys, would you come up here? We're just going to have one moment of prayer. Listen, if you've got a prophetic word and all that stuff, that's great, that's wonderful, but we just don't have time for it now, but you're welcome to give it to us later or send it to us or whatever. Did you want to oh, no, grab, grab it? But Lauren's gonna, oh, okay. Lauren okay. Um, when Connie asked me to have a word for Steve and Jackie yesterday, I immediately, vividly saw a significant, strong, and exceptional lighthouse. And first of all, the Lord said, step back. And I stepped back and he said, do you, do you hear what I hear? And I'm like, show me, Lord. And then it was almost like this landscape along the water, and then I saw the rock, and I, the rock was so firm. And I saw, and I felt like you had been tried and tested and found yourselves worthy. And as I said the word worthy, I heard it, I felt the Lord say, worship. It's like in everything and everything, they have learned to worship me in success, in difficulty, in struggle. It is like... 
the firm foundation of this is your ability to worship. And there's such a sense of thanksgiving and peace upon which this lighthouse is built. He loves that so much. And then I extended up the lighthouse and there was this reciprocal dance between, an, I, this is like the union of your marriage. And then I actually saw your children. So we just honor Sarah and Bethany and Jaden and Zoe. Thank you, thank you, Zoe. And there was this reciprocal dance in the way he's united you in truth and spirit. You shall worship him in spirit and truth. And it's almost as though it's like a practice dance in the same way that a musician practices the notes. And as he gets good at it, the firm foundation, he can move with the spirit. And there's an ability to worship him in spirit and truth. There's, there's this capacity to develop healthy church. And then you get to the lighthouse and the light is shining. And I'm like, Lord, that their light may shine before men and they may praise their father. And then this light refracted through a prism and I felt the sense of the rainbow nation. And the Lord said two things. He has given you keys to make the gospel easily accessible to everyone from different creeds, tribes, nations, different languages, different genders. It's this capacity. And it comes from this effervescent, this bubbling faith that says God can do anything with anyone at any time. That's the first thing I saw. And the second thing I saw was this acceleration into maturity, so I saw sons and daughters being quickly accelerated into kings and queens because of the power of refining community. So you celebrate the presence, but you value family. So I honor you for that. Amen. Wow, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray, but I, can I ask a few of you, just, this isn't just us as a, a leadership team, but this is us as a community. So would you, some of you come join us up here, really just kind of representing the entire body. Some of y'all come on up here, please. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. 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 Yeah. Okay. Now they're all coming. Yes. Get it while you can. There's a big drink up here. Ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> come on. Holy, holy, can, can the rest of, can we all just stand together? Let's just stand. This is, okay. Wow, wow. Father, here we are. Your sons and your daughters. Your family. Father, we thank you that we are your family. The family of God. One blood, the blood of Jesus. And that name, names us. And we thank you for the generations Saki was up here in his 80s and just lead the charge from the oldest to the youngest. There's no junior Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you. The generations connecting by your spirit, by your leadership, by your wisdom, by your power. And out of it, the resources, the provisions, the breakthrough. Father, thank you for the power of this family, our family's natural and our family's spiritual. Thank you for increase in all of them. Natural family, increase. Spiritual family, we have increase in every place, in every person. This is an upgrade for all of us. It's an inheritance for everybody. And so, Father, we thank you that no one's going to be missing out. No, we see it. We hear it. We lean into it. We say yes to it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just defer to your leadership through this entire process. We look forward to October, but God, it's, it's already happening. You're already doing it. Even before that time, I thank you for increase and acceleration and provision and signs, wonders, and miracles that follow the faith and the obedience of your fathers and mothers and sons and daughters. Father, in Jesus' name, Get all the glory. Thank you for angelic protection around all of it. Lord, you're going to stop the enemy in his tracks. And Lord, let this be such a premier testimony of what happens when generations serve and build and love one another like you do. Father, and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Can we give him a big praise? Yes! <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that, I'm going to give some, that's awesome. Remember that. Guys, we've, we've went longer than usual, but at the same time, 
boy, was there a lot to receive, a lot to be encouraged by. You know, we have, we have a purpose, to know God, to love people, and to demonstrate the goodness of Jesus everywhere. We have a vision to live with God and walk with people in such a way that we can love our families, our communities, and our city, and the kingdom, having a whole lot of fun doing it. And, and I, I, you know, you, I really believe you, some, you, some of you are going to notice it. When you're in your car, you're going to go, well, what happened? Something's different. You're going to feel a little bit more strength in your spine. You're going to feel a little bit more, oh, man, I just want to roar. You know, I'm just, you, know, you had a battle and a challenge. All of a sudden, it's like this, wow, that's, we got this, God. I mean, really, you're going to feel that, that upgrade. You can feel it. But it's not just something that stays here. It's something that goes with all of us everywhere. So anyway, love you guys. Love being part of this family. And hey, listen, if you have any questions, it's possible. Because we didn't say everything under the sun or you'd be here at 4 o'clock. So if you have questions that you'd like to talk to any of us leaders about, you're welcome to do that. If you got any encouraging words, you can send those to. We love you guys. Was it? it was warm. We had heat in here. How about the heat? You feel the fire. I had to take my coat off. Man, you know. Anyway, love you guys. Just go have coffee, fellowship. Go get some lunch. Be blessed. And um, yeah, just have a great rest of your weekend. Love you. Yeah. Amen. God bless.